Hello, <clears throat> welcome to chemistry uh, slash no apocalypse um, 2022. Today we're going to be starting um, acids and bases. So the lab that we were supposed to be doing um, is using some litmus paper. So uh, there's red and there's blue litmus paper. Um, so today we're going to test a number of items. Um, so you can write up this lab for next week. Um, these are the substance we're going to be testing. An apple, Windex, soap, some, oh I didn't get soda, um, some toilet cleaner, and some lye. I'll get have my uh, apprentice here get some soda maybe. Where? Um, from the garage. And um, we're going to put a red and a blue litmus paper in each of these things, and we're going to test and see um, what happens. So um, I'll do the ones that I have here so far. So apple. First, make a guess. So do you think an apple is an acid or a base? What do you think it is? An acid. An acid. All right, so we're going to guess acid. And then, um, so... When you're doing litmus paper, um, uh, if I put a blue litmus paper in, if it turns blue, it's a base. Same with a red litmus paper. If I put a red litmus paper on a, if it turns blue, it's a base. If it turns red, it's an acid. So blue is base. Wait, let's use the blue. That means it's a base. And my blue is not very good. And my red, if it's red, it's it's an acid. Okay, so we're gonna do put a blue and a red one on our apple. And we'll see if this is wet enough to okay, so it's turning my blue litmus paper. What color is it turning it? Red. Red. So let's just double check. Well it's not orange. Well, that's as red as it's gonna get. Um, if I can pick up this red litmus paper, I'll put my red one on there and see what color. Oh, wrong way. So, put it, get it wet a little bit. So, it's turning the blue one red. So, that is indeed an acid. Okay. So, now we're going to do the same thing for Windex. Acid, I know that. So you think it's an acid? Okay, so here's our Windex cleaner. I'm gonna take my blue and my red, and I'm gonna stick them. I should have had these separated. They keep sticking together here. Do you want me to separate them? Okay. All right, I'm gonna respray because I think it might have mixed. Okay, so we'll make a guess. What do you think it is? You think it's an acid? Uh -huh. Okay, so if it's an acid, it'll turn the blue red. So here's turning the blue one red. So good guess. I said it was an acid, and it is indeed an acid. Okay, so, so base. you think it's a base? All right, so these ones got wet now because I touched them with my fingers. So here's my blue and my red. I'm going to stick it in my, I have a little bar of soap here. And I'm sticking my blue or my red one in and my blue one in. So what color did it turn? All right, it turned blue. So we guessed it was a base. And it is indeed a base. You didn't get my Minnesota. Can you get get that two liter of oh is it in here? Can you open it and pour just a little bit on a plate? All right, so we'll skip the soda for right here. Toilet cleaner. Toilet cleaner. And we'll put some blue in and a red in the toilet cleaner. What do you think it is? Do you think it's an acid or a base? You think it's an acid? Well, did it turn it red? Yeah. Yep. So toilet cleaner is an acid. She guessed acid. It is indeed an acid. Oops, that's the wrong one. Here, what do you guess the soda is? Uh, acid. You think that's an acid too? We'll test it. Okay, so we guessed acid. And then lye is, um, is what you sprinkle down uh, the drain. We've done some ex 
experiments with it before. Do you want, want to guess if it's an acid or a base? Acid. Okay, she thinks it's an acid. Good, because that's what I was writing. Um, again, I don't want to touch it without a glove because it can sting me. Okay, so this is drain cleaner. And thank you. And then I'm going to put my blue and my red in. So blue and red, does, I touched it, so it has a little bit of red in, but we'll stick it in here. Here's, how about that? What color did it turn? Oh, that one's very base, very, very strong base. So strong that it would, it would hurt my hands if I'm not careful. So that was a wrong guess. But that's okay. That's what we were guessing for. So you guessed soda was an acid? Yeah. All right. So we have some Sprite here. Don't tell Jordan we stole her Sprite. All right. And don't tell Jordan that like uh, Jesse's drinking it. So I'm sticking it down into a cup of Sprite right now. And it turned it red. Turned the blue one red. So, so again soda and it is an acid. So the ones that were a base were soap and lye. All the other ones were acid. How did you do with your guesses? Okay, I'm going to pause this and then we'll talk some more. All right, welcome back. So make sure you write up a lab. You can have a little chart on. Um, this is lab 10.1. Um, so common household examples of acids and bases. So, a litmus paper. What does a litmus paper do? A litmus paper can tell us if something is an acid or a base. Um, in your book, on page 319, um, we can also know that acids have the following properties. Acids taste sour. They um, can conduct electricity when added to water. And they turn blue litmus paper red. So, if you don't know what something is, I wouldn't uh, recommend tasting it to see if it's sour, but if you're drinking something like a soda or orange juice or something, if it tastes lemon sour, juice. lemon juice, it's probably an acid. Um, so an indicator is what we used to indicate if it's uh, acid or base, and that was a litmus paper indicator. So that changed color and the presence of an acid or a base. So um, that's what an indicator does. You should know what an indicator is. Um, next week we'll use another indicator, which we have used before. Um, so cabbage water is an indicator. It changes color. It smells disgusting, but it changes color if it's in the presence of an acid or a base. That's what an indicator does. Um, what about a base? On page 320, bases taste bitter. So again, if you don't know what something is, I wouldn't recommend tasting it just to find out if it was an acid or a base. But if you're eating something and it tastes bitter, it's probably a base. Bases are slippery, so soap, obviously, is probably a base. And um, they turn red litmus paper blue. So if you remember, blue base, blue, it means it's base. Blue, if it turns the red litmus paper blue, it's base. Okay, so chart your results um, and make sure that you tell me um, what I did, but pretend you did it, and or you can do it if you have litmus paper. Um, and then make sure you have a conclusion. So your conclusion should tell me about uh, indicator and um, it should tell me um, how you can tell if something is an acid or a base. Okay, so chart those results. So how does something turn um, things and uh, how do you know if it's, if, why do we care if it's an acid or a base? Maybe we should say that way. Um, so an acid is going to be a molecule Acid is going to be a molecule that donates an H ion. Okay, so if it if it donates an H ion, it's an acid. How about a base then? A base is something that receives an H ion. So the little plus means that it's an ion. Um, so if it receives or it accepts the, the H ion, you know that it's your base. So when we're mixing things together, usually 
they're going one's going to steal the H I N from something else. So if it steals the H I N, you're going to it, it would have been the base. If it gives away an H I N, it would be your acid. So um, um, there are certain things um, that are sometimes an acid and sometimes a base. And you're familiar with one, uh, very, very familiar with one. Um, and that is something that's called an amphiprotic um, substance. If something is amphiprotic, that means if it's in the presence of a base, it can act as an acid. And if it's in the presence of a strong acid, it can act as a base. And water is a very common amphiprotic compound. So you have an OH section, which typically is what a base has they, that would steal an, uh, an H um, or receive an H. But you also have an extra H that can donate to something. So if it accepts a uh, uh, H, you would end up with H3O, and then it's got a positive charge on it. But if it's donating an H, you would end up with an OH negative. Okay, so just know what an amphiprotic compound is. It can act as either an acid or base. Know that water is a common amphiprotic compound. Okay, so let's do, um, let's do example 10-1. Determine which reactant is the acid and which is the base in the following equation. So they gave us the equation, this example 10-1 on page 325. So we have H2, oh, this marker is not going to like me. H, that's not great either. H2SO4 plus Ca. CO3 turns into something. Um, uh, when you're, they're asking which one is the acid and which one is the base, you can kind of ignore the other part, but you might want to see where the, the H goes. Okay, so the H does go, this turns into HCO negative and HSO4 negative. Um, oh, and calcium. I forgot calcium. So Remember, an acid donates an H, and um, the base receives the H. So if I'm looking at both of these, if, if I don't have an H, I can't very well donate an H. So it's very easy for me to look at this and say, if this is an acid-base reaction, this is going to be my base, and this is going to be my acid because it has two hydrogens to donate. So what happens is... This hydrogen went with this car, uh, CO group. This calcium went off on its own, and this SO4 was left with one H. So one of these H's joined together with that. That's what we see here. So this is one H, this is the other one. Did I have, oh, that has a three. And then what's left is one H with an SO4, and then I have a negative charge because I gave away a positive hydrogen. So. When they're asking you which one is the acid and base, look and see which one has a hydrogen to donate. If I have a hydrogen to donate, probably that's your acid. So this is the only one that has a hydrogen to donate, so I would label this as my acid, and this accepted it, so that's my base. Okay, that and that. All right. Um, let's do identify the acid and base in the following reaction. This is on page 326. So, oh, eraser is here. This one might be tricky because if both of them have a wrong one, right? H C L plus N A O H. Well, um, this turns into H two O and N A C L. Okay, so can you tell what happened? So this has an H and this has an H. Okay, but do you remember when we were naming uh, things? Remember the first part um, is 
what we usually uh, is what usually becomes positive, and the, neg the negative part is the second item. So when I have these two things together, it's actually the OH is a uh, um, polyatomic ion, so they, it's a grouping that stays together. So this is the positive part of my ion, this is the negative part of my ion. If you see an OH, you can pretty much be guaranteed that that's going to be your base, especially if you have an H first in something. That's pretty much going to be your acid. So what happened? This H got together with that OH and you got water. This Cl got together with that Na and you have sodium chloride, which is a salt. So oftentimes when you have an acid and base reaction, you end up with water and a salt. So this is actually table salt. I sprinkled this on my um, driveway today because it's icy. So, uh, so if you need to label, this would be your acid then because it donates the H. This would be your base because it receives the H. Okay, so it stole this H to become water. Okay, so this is your base part, your negative part, this is your positive part. Okay, next one. What's gonna happen? We have two H and O3, and again, if you've memorized your polyatomic ions, you can kind of see what's happening because here would be your nitrate group, right? And you have Mg with OH, that's an O, and there's two of them, what happens? Can you guess? So this is gonna be your OH, it's gonna be your negative part. Here's uh, H, that's gonna be your positive part, and how do these things mix together? Well, this is gonna steal that, and this negative part's gonna go with that positive part. So you end up with Mg and O3, there's two of them, and two H2Os. So what did we get? We got a magnesium nitrate, which is a salt, and you got water. So when I mix an acid and a base, acid-base reactions give me a salt and a water. So why don't you show them what pit we're using powder and vinegar? So, um, so the chem two. All right. So you can see on page three twenty eight, you're going to have some common acids. So probably you've heard of hydrochloric acid, HCl, uh, hydrobromic acid, hydrofluoric acid, nitric acid. So these are strong acids that um, they can mix together with something. Um, you might be. Um, so also, they have a distinction on page 329 of something that's called a polyprotic acid. Um, that just means that you have extra H's to donate. If something donates one H, um, or some, if something has two H's, it can donate both of them. So it's sometimes called a diprotic acid. It has two H's to donate. If it has three H's to donate, it's called a triprotic acid. So... Um, if it's a strong acid, it will donate all of those H's. So uh, on your test, I think it gives you a list of things and it says which one is a triprotic acid. Look for the one that has three H's. Or if it has, as asking for the diprotic acid, look for something that has two H's. If it has, um, I think that's what it is that it's asking for. So if you see on page 330, when you have an acid and base reaction, you end up with salt and water. So. Let's do example 10.2. It says, give a balanced equation that represents the reaction between HCl and RBOH. Can you see what's gonna happen? They're telling me, they're, they're already telling me that it's an acid and a base reaction. So in an acid and a base reaction, I'm going to get a, a water and a salt. And, uh, you can look on your periodic table to know the charges, how these things react. But if you remember your polyatomic ions, OH is always a negative one charge. And H is always a positive one charge. So I don't really have to look on my periodic table, I could, to know that chlorine is going to be a negative one charge. It has to be because this is one and this is, this is positive one. This has to be negative one. 
So I could look on my periodic table to see where RB is. I think it's rubinium. Um, but I don't have to. I can sort of know that if this is how it's sticking together, um, this is a negative one, so this has to be a positive one. So how are they going to exchange my ions? Well, when I'm mixing, it, mixing an acid and a base, my, this acid donates an H, my base is going to, the OH is going to steal it, and I'm going to get water. So what's left? I have, you always put the, the positive thing first with the negative thing. So I'm going to get a salt, rubinium chloride is what it would be. I think RB is rubinium. And then H2O is water. Okay, so um, they're going to give you certain things. If they give you the formula, you're kind of, it's easier. Or you can always use your periodic table to see what your charges are. But what happens is you get your H and your OH you get together and make water, and then what do you have left over? Sometimes you might have to have a number here to balance something. We'll do a couple more. Write the chemical equation between sulfuric acid, H2SO4, and sodium hydroxide. Okay, so can you see what's going to happen? Hmm. Well, if this is, remember, I know that H is always plus one and OH is always negative one. Well, if this is negative one, that means sodium, I could look on the periodic table, but that means that that's gonna be positive one. Here, H is always plus one, so there's two of them, so this has to be kind of a plus two. So uh, SO4, you should have memorized, um, should be negative two. Um, it's a sulfate group. So you should have that memorized. You should have uh, done those in the polyatomic ions. So that grouping stays together and it has a negative two charge. So what's gonna happen? I'm gonna get H goes with my OH, but there's two of them. So to get it to balance, I have to have two of these. But that's great because now that two makes that a positive two to go with my negative two. So I'm left with two waters this happens two times. It takes both of the one OH group goes with one hydrogen, the other OH goes with the other hydrogen, and then I have a negative two charge floating around, and that's going to join with my two sodiums. So remember, I put my sodium, I mean my um, positive thing first, and then SO4. Okay, if you want to put a parenthesis around there to remind yourself, but you don't have to because there's only one of them. If there was two of them, you'd have to put a parenthesis and then write a two or something. But this is this is a negative two, so I have to have two of these to give you a positive two to make it work together. Okay? Did I lose anybody? I hope I didn't. All right. What's the reaction that occurs between H and O three? H and O3 and aluminum hydroxide. Can you guess? Well, I've got my positive part and I got my negative part. So this is my acid, this is my base, this is always negative one, but there's three of them. So you can look on your periodic table, but I guarantee you that aluminum is going to be positive three because this has to be, ne it's negative one times three. So this has got to be positive three. This is only po positive one, so that means my nitrate group, should have memorized it, is going to be a negative one. You should have memorized but but you can kind of cheat if you know that your H is positive one. So what's going to happen? My hydrogen is going to get together with my, uh, my OH group, my hydroxide group, and it's got to happen three times because there's three of them. So to make a balance, I have to have three of those, which is great because now I have a negative, this is negative three charge to get together with that. But now I have to remember that that's a grouping, doesn't come apart, so I have to use parentheses when I write it. So this is going to give me three waters, because that happens three times. This you've got three H's to go together with those three negatives. And then this is my positive three, so I have one aluminum, but now I have three nitrate groups, so I have to put my nitrate group, and I have to have three of them. Okay. All right. Um, so sometimes, if
if you have a reaction that these are all the one, all the ones that I've done so far have been um, ionic. So the ionic group completely steals. Remember, they they stick together with positive and negative charges. When I'm talking about covalent compounds, they share charges. Sometimes, sometimes they don't take all of the hydrogen, so you end up with some ions. So, um, so they're a little trickier because they end up with some ions, and usually it's when it's mixing in water, um, so those ions are sort of floating around. So let's do the reaction that be, it's, it's just not as neat of a joining. So let's see, what reaction occurs between um, H3PO4, H3PO4, and ammonia, which they told me is the base. Okay, it would be hard to tell because this has some hydrogens and this has some hydrogens, so you might be confused like what's, which one is my acid. Typically your acid's gonna have your H's first. But they told you in the question that NH3 is base. Okay, so what's gonna happen is um, you have to, uh, you have to, to balance still. So this has three hydrogens that can be donated. So we're going to, we're going to give us three here because it's gonna, each one of these is going to steal a hydrogen is what's gonna happen. And so you're gonna get NH4 and it's gonna have a positive charge then, but because there's three of them, it's gonna happen three times. So you're gonna get three uh, NH4 positive, and then what's, what do you have left? You have a PO4 that's negative. And again, it's, oh, and uh, it lost three of them, so it's gonna be negative three. So it's not as, it's not as easy to guess what's gonna happen, um, but just know that you're, three hydrogens are gonna be stolen by this and you're gonna end up with ions. There is a question like that on the test. So um, it, it usually occurs when you have two things that are covalent. Okay, so uh, let's see, what is the reaction between H2 CR2 and O7 and water. Hmm. Well, remember, water is amphiprotic, so it might be your acid, it might be your base, but if I have something that it's mixing together with two hydrogens in the front here, probably this is going to be my acid and this is going to be my base. So, what's going to happen? If you want to write your water like this, you can, so you see that this is the positive part and this is the negative part. It, it won't hurt you, but it might remind you what maybe, that you can see that this is your base then. So what's gonna happen, you have two hydrogens here to donate. And remember, water is an product, so it can take a hydrogen, and when it takes a hydrogen, it turns into um, H3O, and then you have a negative charge. And then, so, but you have two hydrogens, so it's gonna happen two times, so that means I have to have two of these to happen two times. And then what's left over is my Cr2O7, and it lost two hydrogens, so I'm gonna be negative two charged. Okay, so this would be a diprotic acid. It's got two hydrogens to donate. The one we did before would be a triprotic acid. It has three hydrogens to donate, and so, you see that it's, it's gotta happen two times, or the time before it had to happen three times. And then just remember that you rip the H's off of there, and so you have an ion that has some, some negative charge. Okay? So next time I think we're gonna talk more about molarity, and um, we'll do that when hopefully everybody's here. Okay, so, um, just remember what an acid does. An acid donates an H. A base accepts an H. Remember what a, um, an amphiprotic compound is. It can be an acid, can be a base, depending on what it's mixed with. 
um, and water is a great example of one. And remember what an indicator is, um, changes colors, and the presence of an acid or base. Okay, hope you all stay warm this week.